Well, hello everybody. This is Gloria Harlow Drummond. I want to welcome you all to my scope. This is the 29th. Well, hello Eva. This is the 29th of June of 2020. Yes, I got my wall back. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Got my wall back. And um, anyway, hey, it's John 33. John, well, hello. Really bored, join. Well, hello, I'm Sister Gloria. Welcome to my scope. First day on Periscope, Americans 17767. Welcome to Periscope. Welcome to my scope. I'm Minister Gloria. And God bless you. But um, a word, the Lord spoke a word to me earlier. Make sure you're walking on holy ground. And if so, remove your shoes. Holy ground was the word that, that, that was given to me earlier, earlier this afternoon. Welcome, Tyler Harp, 720, first day on Periscope. Well, hello, welcome to my scope. I'm Sister Gloria, Minister Gloria. Hey, Annie, dear. Hey, sweetheart, I love you. But that was given to me earlier. Are you walking on holy ground? If so, take off your shoes. Take off your shoes. Hawk fan 98252, join me. Hello. Hi, Gloria. Love you. I love you too, sweetheart. I love you so very much. I just wanted to jump on. I know that it's 10 o'clock at night, but I wanted to jump on and uh, I wanted to read a couple of things to everybody tonight. I wanted to read a couple of things. I'm going to turn the camera around and then I'm going to lead us in a word of prayer. And you know, I always do the Our Father. I always do the Our Father. So I'm going to Turn the camera around. Hello. And Grum Gum is a join. Well, hello. I'm Minister Gloria. Welcome to my scope. Whoops, I didn't want to stop the broadcast. I want to say God bless you. God bless all of you that will join uh, either live or by the replay. And as always, I always open up with the Our Father. Okay? So we're going to do the Our Father. <clears throat> Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. All right. What I wanted to say, too, first of all, thank you for the pretty hearts, Annie. I washed a little bit of Pam. And I was, I was surprised, I was shocked because she was talking about walking on holy ground. Take off your sandals. See, the Lord can give different people the same, the same word, the same word. Yes. So anyway, all right. Um, we know when the Lord gives us a word, I need to watch that replay. Oh, of, of Pam's. Yeah, I, I didn't get it all washed because I, I wanted to jump on right away before it got too late. So I'm going to go back and finish washing hers too. And uh, so anyway, um, first of all, I wanted to read something. And then I'm going to read something else. And um, I wanted to say again, God bless you all. All all that, have, that will join and also on the replay. Again, this is Minister Gloria. Gloria and Jesus. Gloria and Jesus. That's it. Glory in Jesus. So, first of all, I'm going to read... I'm going to read something that a very dear, sweet someone uh, sent to me, and I'm going to read it. In fact, I probably ought to read it twice. I'm going to read it twice, and I'm going to, I'm going to read it slow, all right? I'm going to read it slow. Because this this can pertain to a lot of a lot of people, a lot of people. So I'm going to read this. All right. Conflicts. Conflicts. When choosing between something you know and something other people taught you to believe, choose what you know. As with as Whitman said, re-examine all you have been told in school or church or any book and dismiss whatever insults your own soul well any book other than the bible any book other than the bible 
whatever insults your own soul. Having the courage to dismiss what insults your soul is a matter of life and death. If those who claim to speak for God or truth can convince you to believe instead of no, to live from their rules instead of your roots, to trust the voices of middlemen instead of the still small voice inside you, then they they can control you. They can control you. That's so very true. If they can get you to mistrust yourself, to stop feeling, to stop feeling, deny knowing, quit imagining, and instead rely only on them, then they can get you to act against your own soul. That is so true. Well, good evening, Ralph. I'm Sister Glor- Minister Gloria. Welcome to my scope. God bless you. There's Rebecca. Hey, Rebecca. I'm glad you joined. This is this is good. This is really good. Okay, uh, I'm gonna to stop feelings, deny knowing, quit imagining, and instead rely only on them. Then they can get you to act against your own soul. If that happens, then they can get you to follow them, vote with them. Condemn for others. Condemn for them. Even kill for them. Glad to be here. I'm so glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here. All in the name of this God who is constantly whispering to you. That is not exactly it. Perhaps the God conflict is not just about God. Perhaps it is God. So listen deep. And I'm going to read it again since Sister Sister R.S. is on here. All right, I'm going to read it again. It's, it's called Conflicts. Conflicts. When choosing between something you know and something other people taught you to believe, choose what you know. As Whitman said. Well, hello, Sister Gail. I'm glad you joined. Hello. As Whitman said, re-examine all you have been told in school or church or any book. Except the Bible, of course. And dismiss whatever insults your own soul. Having the courage to dismiss what insults your soul is a matter of life and death. If those who claim to speak for God or truth can convince you to believe instead of no, to live from their rules instead of your roots, to trust the voices of middlemen, Hello, I'm so glad you joined. Instead of the still small voice inside you, then they can then they can control you. Amen? Then they can control you. If they can get you to mistrust yourself, to stop feeling, deny knowing, quit imagining, and instead rely only on them, then they can get you to act against your own soul. If that happens, then they can get you to follow them, vote with them, condemn for them. Yes, it is. It is truth. Condemn for them, even kill for them, all in the name of this God who is constantly whispering to you. That is not exactly it. Perhaps the God conflict is not just about God. Perhaps it is God. So listen deep to that still small voice and how many times do we hear that still small voice we we have been given words from the Lord for people and we try to tell the people and they just disregard it they just blow it off they blow it off yeah that's happened to me uh, that's happened to me quite a bit I've had words for certain people you know and the Lord said to, to speak it. So I did. I did. But the seed was still planted. The seed was still planted. Amen. The seed was still planted. Don't ever stop praying. Don't ever stop praying. For your friends, for your loved ones. Don't ever stop praying. All right. Now then, I'm going to read another one. Let me read another one. Okay. Let 
make sure I get the right one. In these times, our peace and safety depend on hearing the voice of the Holy Spirit. Yes! That's not the one. Hold on. I don't think this is the one. Well, this is a good one, too, but... There, here, here it comes. Rob Shore joined. Well, good evening, Rob. I'm Sister Gloria or Minister Gloria. Welcome to my scope. God bless you. All right, this is the one I wanted to read. And some of you know Brother Alan Brayshaw, and some of you don't. He's on Facebook. And like I said, the Holy Spirit leads me to two certain ones. And there's others, too, that, that I want to copy down. And that's just what he does. He leads me to different different posts to copy you know so all right i'm going to read this now this this is a boom bam pop pop sorry that was by accident he is an awesome brother yes he is yes he is and and you are and roxy and a few others you know and and I've, I've even written, I did one here not too long ago. And in fact, I wrote it down. I copied it down. I did one. And I'm going to get on here one of these days and read it. Because I haven't done it on here. I did it on, I did it on, I went on uh, Facebook Live and did it. All right. The title to this is Religious Spirits. It's a good one. Thank you for the pretty green hearts, Annie dear. I love you, honey. Religious Spirits. This was written on 6-27-20. Alrighty, here we go. I'm going to read. I'm going to read this. And this scope it won't be real long. I just wanted to jump on for a little bit, tell everybody I love you guys. And even though that the, the uh, arc didn't work out, that's okay. That's okay because what was meant for my harm, the Lord has something. The Lord has something better for me, for us, you know. So I mean, it is what it is, you know. Sometimes we have to go through a lot of hills and hollers and bumps curves in the road you know and then it always the Lord always works it out he always works it out okay here we go are you ready and I'm glad sister Gail joined I'm glad you joined sister Gail all right I want to talk about religious spirits you see we don't fight flesh and blood Evil spirits can totally consume someone so that they are possessing and controlling someone. Yes. Religious spirits work through people who call themselves Christian. Who call themselves Christian. And even do a lot of Christian-looking things. Christian-looking things. Go to church, run churches, run Christian organizations, write Christian books, but watch out. But watch out. These religious spirits can turn you, turn on you like a wolf in sheep's clothing in no time flat. Yes, they can turn on you on a dime. They can turn. They can turn. They put you down with a smile and cut you to the quick with glint, a glint in their eye. They put you down, cut you to the quick. You are dealing with a demon. You're dealing with a demon. Now, don't get all bent out of shape. Well, he said, don't get all bent, and I added out of shape. There is no point in trying to tangle with them. No point in trying to tangle with them. So don't bother. Jesus said, shake the dust off your feet. He also said not to even bring them into your home or wish them Godspeed. Or you, or you enter into their same iniquity because they have demons. That is true. That is very, very true. The churches and the entire Christian community is like a minefield of religious spirits. A minefield of religious spirits. And only the Holy Spirit can help you navigate this minefield. Can help you man navigate this minefield. Pray for the Holy Spirit to guide you to all truth. Yes, in spirit and in truth. To recognize the Pharisees, the Jezebels, the false prophets, the false teachers, false doctrines. 
false doctrines. Wolves in sheep's clothes and the hirelings and the hirelings. Once you spot someone with the re religious spirit, you are going to know it because they are mean-spirited. They are mean-spirited, cruel, antagonistic, and they will make you question your own faith. How many times has that happened to you guys? It's happened to me. But don't let them. Pray for them. Yes, to be delivered from their evil spirits. But block them and be set apart from them. It is not your job to turn them around. Only God can change a heart. That's right. Only God can change a heart. They have been sent from the evil one to torment you. To torment you. To torment us. Torment is not of God. And he had to join again. Torment is not of God. Let me repeat this. Torment is not of God. So be on guard and pray for discernment. And the sister that wrote this was Susan Davis. And Brother uh, uh, Alan Brayshaw just, he shared it. He shared it. That is so very, very true. That's very, that's so very, very true. But yeah, what I was going to say, what I started to say earlier, the, the Holy Spirit told me today, told me earlier today, are you walking on, on holy ground? If so, take your shoes off. All right, I was watching part of Pam, Sister Pam's scope, and boom, she talked about walking, you know, uh, uh, making sure that we are on holy ground. Take your sandals off. See, like I said earlier, the Lord can give certain people the same exact word. The same exact word. He's talking to a lot of us. Just like those of us that warn, that try to warn people. It falls on deaf ears. Well, like I've said before, and like many other people have said, it's our jobs as watchmen on the wall, ministers of God, true blood-bought Christians, Bible believers, to get the warnings out. And if people refuse to listen, then their blood isn't on our hands. They're not. It, the blood isn't on our hands. You know, and things are getting mighty ugly. Things are getting mighty ugly. And things are increasing, as most of us know. Things are, are increasing. Rose Royalty One, well, hello, Sister Rose. I'm glad you, I'm glad that you joined. Hello. But yeah, and again, I want to, to, to say something else too. Those of you that have been worried and concerned about me, you don't have to be anymore. I'm, I'm back. I'm, I'm fine. I'm just fine. I'm fine. I know, again, I know my calling. I know my calling. I am standing firm, standing on the Word of God, standing on the promises of God, and what I know that He called me to do and what He called me to be. And I've said this before. And we also, we also can forgive ourselves when we get things wrong. Good. Yes. Yes. We all, we all, we're not perfect, and we can get some things wrong. We, we can be confused, and God isn't the author of confusion. He's the author and finisher of our faith. He doesn't give us the spirit of he doesn't give us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. Okay. We were out to the mall this afternoon. We were out to the mall this afternoon. Of course, hadn't been out there for what three months. Well, the old anxiety started creeping up on me when I looked down that mall that hadn't happened to me since back in the 80s anxiety fear and I had to, I had to make myself I had to rebuke the devil and I had to make myself I said Gloria you're gonna be all right you're gonna be fine I needed the exercise I, need, I needed to walk but that old anxiety panicky feeling creeped up on me but I made myself stay we stayed out there probably a good hour. We stayed out there. And the longer we stayed, the better I felt. And I kept saying, thank you, Jesus. I was going down the mall saying, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, because the devil is going to attack. And I've said this before, and like many others have said, he seeks to kill, steal, and to destroy. 
He wants to take as many people with him as he can. As many people as he can. And I knew when that feeling started coming over me, when, when we were leaving Penny's to, to go down the mall. Pen, Penny's is open too, by the way. Yay. But I had that. I looked down the mall. And that that feeling, like something was trying to close in, like it did back in the 80s. And I had to, I had to rebuke the devil, rebuke the spirit of fear, face the devil head on, we walked on down the mall. I had to sit a few times because of my back, you know. But I did it. I did it. And when we got when we get it was getting ready to leave, I was feeling a lot better. I was feeling a whole lot better because we hadn't been out. We hadn't been out for quite a while, you know. But I wanted to say that. Say I wanted to say that as well, you know. And. But yeah, um, you have victory. Yes, I do, Sister Rebecca. Victory in Jesus. Victory in Jesus. Yes. Amen. Amen. Victory in Jesus. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. Well, he sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Love hearing you sing. And I love to sing. My voice isn't the greatest, but I do love, I love to sing. I love to sing. I love to sing. You know, and sometimes in the morning when I wake up, of course, I always talk to the Lord before I go to sleep. And when I wake up, I always talk to the Lord. And sometimes I'll sing to the Lord. Even when you're in the bathroom, you know, or something, you can talk to the Lord. And I do. And I do. And I know that everything is going to work out for the good. If we seek Him diligently and seek ye first the kingdom of God and all His righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto us. Yes, we've got some bad stuff coming. We've got we've got some bad things coming. Yes, we know that. We know this, but we have got to to to, to pray to be more bold. Your testimony brings me joy. Oh, well, I mean, I'm just I'm real, Sister Rebecca. I'm real, and other people can tell you the same thing. There's nothing fake about me. There's nothing fake about me. I mean, I'm an open book. Any, anybody, if anything, anybody wants to ask me, go right ahead and I will tell the truth. Because I have nothing to hide. I'm just a woman who loves the Lord, who wasn't qualified to be a minister, but he calls the unqualified. He calls the unperfect. Or imperfect. Because we are not perfect. Nobody is. Nobody is. Though I think those are socks or gloves. Joe's in here going through things. I think those those might be socks. I don't yeah. know. But yeah, you know, I mean, and and the devil will whisper little things like, "You're not good enough," you know, just just little, you know, like, "Oh, you're you're you can't do that," you know, "You're you're not you're not good enough." Yes, that way he gets the glory. Yes, he does. And. <clears throat> you have to you have to uh push the broadcast button anyway. I wanted to get on there the other night. I wanted to get on in fact I was gonna come on here last night, but yesterday marked the tenth year of Joyce's dad passing away and I was, you know, a, a bit sad. You know, 'cause we always are, me and my daughter we're we're always sad, you know. He went through a horrible three years, three year illness. And, you know, I know where he, we know where he is. We know where he is. But every, you know, every year, you know, and, uh, but anyway, um, and I, and a lot of you know that I go, I tend to go in circles. And if I think it's something, I'll say it, you know, and uh, sometimes I get off subject. That's okay. That's all right. That's okay, you know. I'm just me. Didn't even finish high school. I dropped out in my in my uh, 
in 10th grade, I dropped out. You know, um, I was tired of being teased. I kept being late for classes. Couldn't find my way around in the high school. Couldn't find my way around. Knew where my locker was. <laughs> but I just, I dropped out. People have asked me through the years, well, Glory, were you sorry you quit school? And I said, no. You know, the Lord teaches us. Praise the Lord. He teaches us. Like my like my dad. Like my dad. He didn't even he he barely went to sixth grade. He was raised in the hills and hollers of Kentucky. He couldn't read or write, but he wanted to do once he got saved, he wanted to preach God's word. He said, Lord, if you'll teach me to read and write, I want to be I want to be your disciple, your minister. The Lord and I was I was a small child, but I remember. My daddy could not read or write, and the Lord taught him to read and write. He said, all I want to do is, is preach, your, preach your word. Preach your word. And by gosh, she did. By gosh, she did. He taught him to read and to write. And that's, an, that's, another, whole, that's a, another whole scope. But anyway, my dad also told me, also miracle, yes. And my dad told me way back when I was a teenage girl, he said, he always called me Pip. He said, Pip, he said, you have a mighty calling on your life. You don't understand it now. He said, I won't be around to see it. And he was a young man when he passed away. I won't be around to see it. But he said, don't lose your talent. He said, you have gifts. And sure enough, you know, all these years later, it's just, it's it's amazing. It. it it's truly amazing. And I kept telling the Lord, I said, but Lord, I said, I can't preach. You know, I can't, I can't get out there and street preach. Well, I did. I do. I haven't been out for a while, but I'm going to get out. I'm going to get out and do it here pretty, pretty soon. I'm going to get out and do it. World Vision Day, you guys. He spoke blessings over you. Yes, he did. He was a mighty man of God, Rebecca. He was a mighty, mighty man of God. He died of a brain tumor. He died of a brain tumor at the age of 43. He would have been 44, May the 27th, and he died May the 9th of 1971. I was 17 when he passed away. You know, but yes, he was a mighty, mighty man of God. But, yeah, um, getting back to, to the street preaching, yes, I'm going to be out street preaching. You know, and... Oh, I know what I, I know what I said. World Vision Day. Now, some of you know about Harvest Army out of New York City, but I'm with Harvest Army. I get out every year. I've missed a few of them because I was either sick or um, the weather or something. But I missed a few of them. But I'm going to be. Try, I'm going to try to be out. I think it's July the. It's on a Saturday. Good. I'm still going out. Yes. Amen. That's good. That's great. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But I'm going to go out. It's it's always on a Saturday, and it's at noon, right at noon. Everybody all over the United States, all over the world, gets out and street preaches. Or they hold up signs, like John three sixteen through 21. They hold up signs, you know, trying to reach the world. You know, re spread the gospel throughout all the world before the Lord comes. Before the Lord comes. I started with Har Harvest Army, I think, back in 2014 or 15, and thought I'd never be able to do it, but I did. And every time I do it, and if I, if I, you know, can't think of what to say, the Holy Spirit just He gives me the words to say. He just He gives me the words to say. Thanks for telling me Saturday afternoon. Yes, and you, you can really do it any time. I mean, you can do it any time. 12 noon is the actual time. Harvest Army. Harvest Army. And they, they've been doing this, I think, since 2007? 2007 or 2008. And uh, that's what I do every... I'm supposed to do it... Well, it's every 90 days. Every 90 days. At noon. Okay. Yes. Yes. Get on that bullhorn. i got to make sure my bullhorn... I got, I've got two of them, and i got to make sure they're, they're, they've got batteries in them, too. Uh, I mean that the batteries aren't too low. Mine has sirens on them. It has sirens on them. Yeah. I did uh, three out of the mall, our mall, 
two out of the mall. And then they said I couldn't do it anymore because the higher ups had a fit about it. They said, no, 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 you can't, you can't uh, preach street preach out here, you know. <clears throat> but anyway, it's on my YouTube channel, and uh, it's also on. Yeah, it's on here too on on my archives where I pre street preached, you know, and. Uh, once I got that bullhorn in my hand and I started, I started preaching, it just, the words just flowed out. My daughter and my grandson helped me a couple of times. It was nice having them with me. I miss my cameraman. Jordan was my cameraman. <laughs> but anyway, the two guys, they helped me. One holds my iPad and the other one holds my phone, you know, and, but anyway, you guys, I know I, I went way, where, you know, I kind of got off topic and everything, but that was okay, too. You know, I guess I'm, I guess I'm spontaneous. Um, oh, yeah, I know what I wanted to do. I know what I wanted to do. Re Rebecca, are you still on here? I don't knock stuff over. Are you still on here, Rebecca? No, she is not. Yes. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. Let's see. I don't, I don't want to. Hang on just a minute, you guys. Thank you, Joseph. I'm going to show. Yeah, I want to show. I want to set this. Well, you gotta, you gotta get it to where it's on. Can you fix it for me? Well, you're gonna have to move the, some of this stuff. All right. Well, oh, that's gotta go. Sitting up straight. Okay. All right, I want to show you something. Move the mirror out of the way. I'm dropping things, people. That's all right. That's okay. I'm going to sit back. All right. Well, hello, brother. Hello, Pastor Dave. You're just in time. I want to show, I want to show Rebecca and other people. Um, something, and I'm gonna have to turn turn the camera around. Uh, I'm gonna try it this way anyway. Hang on, hang on a minute. I'm gonna zoom it out. Okay, this was Joyce's dad taken back in 2009. It might be a little bit glary. Back in 2009. A year before he passed away, something is good, yes. Well, it, it's my my uh, daughter's father, Pastor Dave. 2009, and he passed away in 2010. Right up there, let's see. Well, right up, right up here was his shunt. He went through a lot. Thank you for showing us this. He went through a lot. He went through a lot. But that was Steve. We always played, he always played the guitar and we sang. I played piano. All right, how old was he? He was, well, see, 10 years. We were the same age. I was five days older than him. My birthday is September the 12th and his was the 17th. I see Jesus in his eyes. Yes, he, he was right with the Lord. He was right with the Lord before he died. He went through a lot, you guys. He went through a lot. All right. Now I'll show you something else. Let me set, let me set this in the... 
set this in the stand. I promised Rebecca that I was going to show her. Now, some of my pictures that I have, some of the pictures that I have are put away. But I do have one, however. I do have one back when me and her, her dad first got together before we got married. Don't worry, I know right where it is. I know where it is. <laughs> He was a crazy guy. We had lot, we had lots of good times. Oh, well, what we thought were good times. Lots of good times together. Okay, I gotta find. I'll find it right. Now this was taken in nineteen seventy two, seventy three. All right, you guys, <laughs> if you can see this, this was Steve. He, he was six foot three, and that's me. Remember the flower dresses back that you could, you could get lost in that purse? I know. That was me and Joyce's dad. He was tall. He was a tall guy. Had lots of hair. That's me sweet we were very happy we were very very happy i managed to hang on to that thank you annie dear but i managed to hang on to that and i had it uh um well, what do you call with the plastic around in it powerful yes yes we uh, he played uh, guitar and i played uh piano red hair we, uh, yeah it was kind of a reddish um kind of a reddish brown laminated that's the word laminated yes okay I've got one picture of my dad but I, I don't know where it is I need to find some more pictures of my mom and my dad hold on a minute you guys how long were you married when he passed away? Well, we had been divorced, Annie, since 1991. Um, the only way I can word it is the Jezebel spirit stepped in. We'd been through a lot through the years. Jezebel spirit stepped in. He left me. Took Joycey. I'd been through a lot. And, uh, but I do believe if Steve hadn't have been sick, I believe if he hadn't got sick, that's another that's another story. But he real needs to, to say he he realized he had made a terrible mistake by leaving me and taking my daughter. He realized he had made a mistake. In other words, but I wanted to share I wanted to share that with you guys. He was a good man. He was a very good man. A very good husband. Good provider. Wonderful provider. Thank you for sharing. You're welcome, sweetheart. But like I said, though, I wanted to... You're welcome, Rebecca. I promised Rebecca. Rebecca asked me if I would... If I had any pictures. Like I said, good thing I knew right where they were. I just found that picture of Steve. I just found that uh, a couple days ago. Um, it was found, and I, I seen that again, and wow. You know, and so we found a big enough frame to put it in, and... Yeah, it was a year before he, he died. Yep. But yeah, he even wrote a song about me. He wrote a song for me. Yep. And I had it on uh, some cassette tapes. Uh, I don't know where they're at. I've got, I still got a bunch of tapes. Some of the tapes have broken through the years, you know. To those of you that knows what cassette tapes were. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah. He sang it to me, and sure did. <laughs> it's funny how a scope can completely turn around. Turn around. He is watching over you and Jorsey with Jesus. Yes, he is. I know. I know. And Jordan. Poor Jordan. And also Tyler. Tyler, too, you know, my oldest grandson. You know, he's a good boy. He's got. He's a good boy. He's got a good head on his shoulders. You know, train your child... Uh, up to the way that they should go, you know. And even though he, um, he was 
in a, an, a I'll just say a religion, different religion, whatever, you know, set tapes, laugh out loud, we remember. Yeah, you were back and I remember. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yes, and Pastor Dave, yeah, I know he remembers too. And the old 8-track tapes. Those things broke pretty easy, though. But yeah, we had an 8-track tape player. We had one in the car, and, and, and we had a stereo that had an 8-track tape player on it, you know, too, you know. So I remember, too. Yeah, I know, Annie, you're not... Well, you're young, but you're you're old enough to remember some of them things, too, you know. And uh, But anyway, th this has been wonderful. I was able to, to bring, bring a message and uh, laugh a little bit and... I had cassette tapes as a teen. Yeah, Joycey did too. She did. Yeah. And then the CDs came out. CDs came out and it's very hard to buy, it's very hard to find cassette tapes anymore. It's very hard to, fi to find them. You know, and you also gotta, gotta keep the heads cleaned on your tape player because if you don't, it'll eat, it'll eat the tapes. Same with the eight track tapes. You know, you had to clean the heads on it or it, it, it would eat them up too, you know, so. But anyway, you guys. I love you. What time is it? 20 to 11. Wow. Well, thank you. Thank you for the pretty green hearts. All the hearts, you guys, all the hearts you give me is, is all for Jesus, not for me. Glad you came on. Well, thank you, honey. I'm glad. I'm glad I did, too. I knew I, I, knew I was going to. I knew I was going to. So, um, to, and to all the replay viewers, I love you all with the love of Christ. And, you know, just... Stay focused. I've said this before, and I'll keep saying it. Look not to the right or to the left. Straight ahead on Jesus. Straight ahead on Jesus. He'll never leave us or forsake us. He's just a whisper away. Always just a whisper away. I love your broadcast. Well, thank you, Sister Rebecca. That means a lot coming from you. It means a lot. You know. So let's let's go ahead and close this out with the Lord's Prayer with... Well, with the disciples' prayer. Let's just close it out with that, okay? I love you guys. Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And they all said, they all said, amen. Again, thank you all for joining me tonight. I love you. I love you all. Hey, it's John 33. Hello, I love you. I'm glad you joined, Brother John. I'm glad that you joined. And you can go back and watch the replay. Go back and watch the replay. So, um, just love people. Lift one another up. Be kind to one another. Be kind to one another. Good night. Love you. I love you too, Annie, dear. You can put that picture back in there now if you want to. I'm not done with that. I'm going to go ahead and drink it since I didn't get to drink it. I usually stop my coffee at 1030, but... Oops. Thank you, Joseph. <laughs> it's half decaf and half caffeine, but it's not strong. It's not strong, so... But anyway, you guys, I love you. Until my next broadcast, I still have to go to you onto YouTube, and I need to straighten my channel out. I got to get my, my channel straightened out. So, until I can, if I do end up, if I upload a video, it goes to my drafts. It goes to my drafts until I can get it straightened out. So, alrighty, I love you guys. Have a sweet Jesus, peaceful night's sleep. Kisses and hugs to each and every one of you. To each and every one of you. Hu t t hugs. So, I love you guys. Keep looking up. I used to say, I, I used to say, eyes to the sky, for we know not when our Lord will return. We know not the day or the hour. We must be ready. Put on the whole armor of God, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation. Take on the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the boots of peace, and the sword of the Spirit to be able to come against the wives of the devil because he seeks to kill, steal, and to destroy. Amen? Amen. Yes, he does. And we have to be aware. Awake, aware, and alert. Awake, aware, and alert. Because he, he roams around. 
to seeking to whom he can devour. And we all know this. We all know this. So, all righty, you guys. I love you. Good night. Love you.